So the first half of this week was about discrete probability distributions. And there were two uh, distinct ideas here. One was just the general discrete probability distribution. The idea that we could display, if our x is discrete, all of the different, oops, I forgot my x inside of here. Uh, all of the different possible outcomes for x, whatever the heck our x might be, along with all of the probabilities associated with those outcomes. The probability of zero whatevers, let's just say this is 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and then 0 0.4. Um, we did have some things that we needed to check to make sure something was a valid discrete probability distribution. One, all of the actual probabilities in this table should be legitimate. Uh, by legitimate, I mean between uh, zero and one inclusive. I did have a lot of students answer uh, knowledge check, I think it was seven, that the probability of something happening was 6.4. Um, so 6.4 is not a probability. It's not between zero and one, it's not legitimate. And in fact, it's something I typically will take an extra point off uh, in terms of partial credit if you were to write a probability that's not within these, these bounds. The other piece here is that all of the values, the entire sample space, because that's gonna be the probability of S, our sample space, should be one. So that's what we're looking for when we're looking for a valid probability distribution uh, for a discrete random variable. Um, things I can ask you about for these probability uh, things, one, is it valid? which is just checking those two options. One is a probability for any particular outcome here. So X is less than or equal to two. And just recognizing that in that case, less than or equal to two would be everything here. Um, I of course will not use probability notation for a problem like that. I would instead use words uh, so that you could show that you understand how to translate that into particular outcomes and that we want to add them together. So in this case, we would just add, uh, since they are mutually exclusive, we can go ahead and say this is just 0.1 plus 0.2 plus 0.3. Um, so finding a probability. And then the last thing is I could ask you to find an expected value for this distribution. We also learned standard deviation, um, but that calculation is a little gnarly and I haven't found a good calculator that does it for you. Um, beyond the, the graphing calculator and whatnot. So while there's a standard deviation one, I could definitely give you that and ask you questions about it, but I'm not gonna ask you to calculate it. I'm much more interested in knowing that you can use this formula to calculate the expected value for our discrete probability distribution, which is essentially just a weighted mean. So every outcome with how often it would happen uh, is all you're gonna do to calculate an expected value. The other distinct idea that we got to in this beginning here of part five was the binomial distribution. Um, in fact, this was a big one, right? Because we had that big worksheet on it. Um, I gave you guys a calculator that you could use online to find all of the probabilities. So you don't need to use the actual formula. You should still understand what the formula means and how it is working, right? This probability of X is equal to K. Um, and choose k, p to the k, q to the n minus k, or one minus p, however you wanna do it. Uh, basically, we have our number of ways to order something multiplied by all of the different, this is all of the successes, their probabilities multiplied together, and then you have all of the failures and their probabilities multiplied together. It's essentially what's happening. And that was the goal of that uh, guessing on a quiz activity was to get you to sort of discover, oh, this makes sense where this formula comes from and why we have this awesome ability to just type these things into calculators uh, and statistical software to give us out these probabilities. So obviously I could ask you to find a probability and then the other thing I love to have is uh, checking those conditions that we needed uh, because this idea of checking conditions becomes vitally important as we move forward in the class. So checking the B, I, N, S, the binary outcomes, independent trials, a fixed number of trials, and success staying the same, uh, checking that is definitely a crucial idea. So. Um, that was a little bit of what we covered at the beginning of part five in the first half of this week. Um, in terms of the actual worksheet, 
I don't want to see this. I mean, you can if you want to, but I'm really just looking for some notation telling me what direction you chose, uh, whether it's doing something like this, oops, or doing what I did in the first videos of actually writing out the list of all the values and just circling greater than equal to three is this, uh, something to show that you know which outcomes we were actually interested in.